Good morning. Hello. How are you? Oh, oh it's not freezing today. So I might go the the windy route. Got the grandchildren staying with us today, so a little bit later than normal. Can still rattling about in the back. Just wash my hair. <laughs> 62, look at that, still jet black. Not so much of it. But uh, not dyed. Neither. Nothing's dyed. Nothing's dyed on me. <laughs> Bit of a grey day today, you know, a bit overcast. But good for filming. See, good light. Now, what should we talk about today? Surely there can't be anything left. That uh, woman we thought was a lunatic came in. I don't know, she's a bit sort of highly strung, I would say bit sort of oh no I can't do that and then oh yes I can so she's like oh I can't have a scale and polish and then she, yesterday she came and she had a scale and polish so we tried to um, scale her lower left 321 and she did start jumping about after a bit every time we touched her gum she jumped so uh, I said to her look I can't uh, I can't carry on because she'll keep moving you know, and she said, oh, yes, you can, yes, you can. Just keep going, keep going, you know. This usual sort of, I'll, I'll suffer, I don't. It's me that's suffering. I don't mind carrying on suffering. And I said, no, I can't. Uh, you know, I said, I've got a sharp instrument here and uh, uh, I can't uh, do anything. If you're gonna be moving quickly, jerking your head around and that, I said, I might stab you in the lip. And then that, that'll that be a big problem. And she said, no, it won't. I'll tell everyone it wasn't your fault. It wasn't, it was my fault, you know. I said, if you do, I said, you'll be the first patient in history that has ever said that. Because I've never known a patient, you know, the patients always say, I was having a scan and polish and then uh, Mr. Watson stabbed me in the lip. So I'm going straight to Dental Law Partnership and I'm going to sue him for 8,000 quid. <laughs> I said, patients never say, I should have had a local anaesthetic, but I re unreasonably refused. And as a result, I moved my head suddenly. And as a result, Mr. Watson stabbed me. But it was entirely my fault. I've never heard anyone say that. But they always say that Mr. Watson stabbed me thing. So I said, I'm not, you know, I'm too older. I'm too old and too wise to fall for that one. So I said, no, I said, look, this is it. I said, either we get you numb and I'll finish off or we'll just stop and say that, no, we can't do a scale and polish on you. So I said, it's not a problem. I said, lots of people get and numbed. I said, I'd rather you got numbed because to be honest with you, it's stressful for you and it's stressful for me. If you're stressed, I'm stressed. And uh, you know, when you're numb, it's like, oh, okay. Oh, does that mean an injection? Yes, it does. It means injections to get you numb. And then we finish the scan and polish off. You can't feel a thing. Oh, all right then, I'll do that then. So we gave her three infiltrations. Lower right, sort of four, three lower right two one areas and um, and waited and had a chat and funnily enough I mean we had 45 minutes to do this scale and polishing of six teeth so it's not exactly like uh, we weren't really like rushed rushed for time so we just had a chat I just sat down and I just said I had a chat with her and she told me how she moved to the area and 
and her family were from wherever and they were all farmers and blah 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 and you know she, we just had a chat I think she was quite pleased just to get to know each other a bit better and then of course we did the uh, scan and polish she didn't feel a thing she thought it was wonderful and I said to her like I'll make a note on your on your notes the next time we do a scan and polish because we went over brushing and everything assuming that you need another scale and polish next time we do it I'll just make a note we'll give you a couple of injections get you numb and then it'll all be done too sweet so um, so that was the end of that but I mean she did turn out to be a bit of a management problem in the end you know what I mean but the management problem was that none of her dentists probably had had the time to explain to her why it was a good idea to get numb and do it and then wait until it worked etc etc so uh, anyway she was so happy she paid for her two root treatments and post grounds when she left straight away so we've had two thousand pounds in the kitty come on walking down the road. They do feel for these villages that have got um, presumably no cars. Because if you had a car on your drive and you're taking your kids to school, you'd bung your kids and a dog in the car, wouldn't you? Just take them to school. But these lot uh, walk up the country lane, which is great. You know, I mean, that's great if it was a country lane, but it's not really. It's the main route south to north and vice versa from uh, Moncton to Wingham. And there's no bypass and there are no pavements. You know, I blame the council personally. You know, they should have at least a path or something going alongside. But the massive great lorries that come down here, you know, they've shown no indication to ban lorries that come down here. So why should they worry about uh, children, you know? Anyway. So that was good. And then we had another young lad in who wanted an emergency. He said he uh, had someone had started a root treatment for him four months ago or something, and uh, told him to come back and get it finished. But he hadn't come back and got it finished. So obviously, what had happened is the crystalline had worn off and the infection had come back, and now he was in agony and he wanted to have the tooth out. And I said to him, "Don't you want to have the root treatment finished off?" And he said, "No, no." He said, "I've already paid two hundred quid for you know to get it fixed temporarily. I'm not paying." Every time I come, it's another 200 pounds here, 200 pounds there. I'd rather just have the blooming thing out. Well, he was only 30 years old, this guy. So, fortunately, daddy's upper six is out, which, and the sevens had moved forwards, which is always a sign that, you know, he'd been a bit of a problem as a child. And, uh, but it left me with a nice uh, situation of having a decayed upper right seven with nice conical roots instead of a decayed upper right six with splayed out anchor type roots and so we managed to get him in, clerk him in, do, do his medical history, take an x-ray, get him numb and uh, take the tooth out all in about 32 minutes. So that was good and he said oh that was quick you know that was great very slick very quick so I'm like oh thank you very much. So I work on definitely work on the basis that I don't, if someone says, oh, I've paid a lot of money and you did that really fast, oh, that's a compliment. That, you know, you can take it both ways, can't you? You can either think, oh, he's dissatisfied because it didn't take long, you know? So, it's like, it's like your car breaking down and, uh, you know, in the, uh, take it to the garage and they say it needs a new clutch, it's gonna cost you 2,500 quid. And you say, okay, and then, um, they take it out the back and 10 minutes later they bring it back and they say, uh, there we are, it's, uh, 
there's your new clutch, uh, 2,500 quid, thanks very much. So, <laughs> unless you can justify, unless you can say to yourself, well, the clutch must have cost 2,000 and the 500 for the service, then you're gonna to think to yourself, oh, but then it's Mr. Clutch, you see, Mr. Clutch, my hero, decided that he could just do a switch, a quick switch out with clutches, in the same way as people had their oil changed and their brake pads changed, they could have their clutch changed, and uh, before you know it, he's, he's making a load of money off a complicated procedure by doing it quickly. Not slowly, you know, nobody wants to spend a load of time with a dentist. Nobody wants to spend uh, an hour and a half doing a root filling like I did yesterday on this guy. Superb root filling, superb root filling I might have. But, um, was, uh, you know, upper left six and three roots, etc., etc. Looked for a fourth, couldn't find one. Anyway, it just occurred to me today that, oh, to just have a quick chat on the theme of recording because we are recording, you see we're recording now aren't we? There we go, we're recording me turning right in a minute on the junction of death. Let me just concentrate. That's all right. I don't want to get T-boned at that bloody junction and then them analyse the footage on the phone and say, yeah, the last thing that uh, he was doing was he was talking on the phone. So, so recording, okay. The, I've had some funny incidents with recording. Well, I was uh, chairman of the Dental Practitioners Association, formerly the, the GDPA, General Dental Practitioners Association. It was an association of dentists formed in about 19... 54 and uh, and uh, was was you know it was like <laughs> it was like the militant wing of the dental party and uh, there was you know the people who joined joined because they were um, agitators and malcontents and <laughs> And uh, the trouble was that they just continued to cause trouble by agitating and being malcontent within within the council. They were it, they were like a bag of cats, you know. And uh, never really uh, did much other than turn up to the meetings three times a year, claim, claim their expenses, have a drink, and then uh, you know fly back to wherever they came from. But we had a situation where, as the secretary, I used to keep the minutes. And then uh, the first item on the agenda was matters arising from the previous meeting. And that was very much based on the minutes that I'd taken. And we used to get a situation where someone would say, look, you know, on the minutes, it says it was decided, this was decided. But I, I don't think it was. Or... The minutes say that I said something and I didn't say that. <laughs> or the minutes don't say that I said something and I did say that. So we decided to uh, bring in a recording system. And it sat in the middle of the table and we had a couple of microphones set up, one each end of the table. And it was a bit, you know, conspicuous at first, but people were soon, soon ignored it. You know, it's a funny thing about cameras and microphones, people after a while they just forget they're there and um, the next day after the meeting because we had the meetings on a Sunday and the next day after the meeting was a Monday and I used to sit there and just listen listen to the um, I used to make some notes at the time but uh, listen to the transcript and just sort of write it up and so from that point onwards the, the meetings <clears throat> the minutes became very accurate by which I mean you know almost literal they were or, no, they weren't transcriptions, but they were a very, very accurate record of what had been said and what had been agreed. And of course, um, uh, the people who are used to all this, you know, uh, making themselves right after the event, were didn't like this at all. 
and they continued to raise their objections and I was able to say these minutes are based on um, on the, the recording of the meeting and which still exists and anyone can have and so if anybody is unhappy with the minutes then just give me a shout and I'll send you the recording or the part of the recording where you said what the minutes say you said and of course that blew their argument completely out of the water because they knew that the uh, audio meeting uh, the files which were available to everybody would substantiate my uh, my re response because otherwise why would I say it you know I mean there's no point threatening somebody with a gun if the gun's not loaded so anyway for a while it, uh, uh, it pacified everybody and then um, uh, they then had a bit of a weak campaign to try and stop the recordings which was a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a damp squib because what, on what grounds are you going to say that the meetings are shouldn't be recorded you know um, I think the reason the, the real reason was they found out that it gave too much power to the secretary but it was only the power of truth it wasn't you know so uh, anyway that's that's one story about recordings but <clears throat> you'll find I mean the point is you will find uh, anybody who claims to be open and transparent and uh, accountable uh, should have no trouble with you recording a meeting or anything you should be able to record everything um, and um, it's a very quick way to find out whether people are committed to openness and transparency is to just say to them look do you mind if I record this meeting uh, because I you know I just say I can't take notes um, because I'm going to be um, writing uh, and talking and I can't take notes at the same time we don't have a dedicated note taker like most uh, dental commissioning authorities if you go to a meeting they'll have a dedicated note taker and you can bet your life that uh, the notes and the minutes that they produce will be the minutes that they want to produce it will say what they want to say <coughs> I, went, I went to have represented a member once I think it was in uh, North Shields she's a nice lady and uh, she'd been uh, paid twice basically she'd been uh, she was a prison dentist and there was a period where prison dentists were transferred from being paid by the prison service presumably on a salary to um, the National Health Service and during that period they'd been paid by both authorities and she hadn't said a word and just got paid twice and uh, being a you know a private employer my initial thought is that you know this would just the payroll department would just sort this out and she would be asked to pay back what she'd been overpaid but being a public uh, body and two different public bodies um, and, and, and also she quite surprisingly to me just said no I'm not paying it back um, it's their mistake they paid it to me and um, now it doesn't work like that in my opinion because if you receive money and you know full well that you shouldn't be receiving it then uh, you will be asked to pay it back and you will have to pay it back if um, let's say uh, <laughs> if let's say you buy an Aston Martin let's say for £200,000 and the actual final invoice comes to 201 then that's not you know I mean that's or, or, or it comes to 199 and so as a result you save a thousand you know that's not unbelievable but if you drive away with an Aston Martin and they and you, and you say can you just send me an invoice and they send you an invoice for 200 pounds then your spidey sense should pick up the fact that that is probably not someone's made a fat thumb error there and uh, and so if you, you can't uh, pay your 200 pounds and insist on keeping the car so that's why prices it, <clears throat> things are mislabeled and you buy stuff <clears throat> mainly online because online they sometimes put stupid prices on stuff 
and you order it and then they cancel the order and you say well on what how can you cancel the order and the, and the answer is that uh, um, putting a price on some goods on the internet is merely an invitation to buy it <clears throat> it's not an actual contract of sale although I actually don't see how that works because a contract is an offer acceptance and agreement on the price and so once you've uh, used their shopping basket you've you've offered or they've offered you've accepted and you have agreed on the price so you know but this is all yeah you can't win you can't win so we went along to the North Shields uh, commissioning authority and I said do you mind if we uh, record this I had a little recorder hand recorder uh, unbeknownst to them I had um, my iPhone was on and it was recording as well so I had two recorders going so I just held up the recorder and I said look do you mind if we uh, record the meeting and they were like oh no 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 we can't allow that no that's not that's most irregular and I'm like oh is there a, is there a rule against recording meetings they're like no 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 but uh, if you insist on recording the meeting then we'll just cancel the meeting we'll just call it off so I said well I've got to record it I've got we've got no dedicated minute taker and I'm not going to trust your minutes no well, that's our final word so I'm like okay all right so I made a big show of turning off the recorder and still got the full um, transcript because um, the iPhone is a brilliant sound recorder and you know and I wasn't going to be bullied by them but um, uh, it was the same when I went up to the uh, National Institute of Health um, and they um, when they were debating dentistry and uh, evidence-based dentistry and that, and they ban um, all electronic devices from coming in. So you can bring your mobile phone in, and but you're you're a little bit far away to record anything. But and recording stuff is banned anyway, and they don't even like laptops and stuff like that. So what I ended up doing was um, just writing down with pencil and paper what they'd said, and. Um, and then in the evening, just uh, doing like a piece of camera, saying that this is the this is uh, what they'd agreed, you know. And in fact, they went to the extremes of um, when they realised that what they were talking about and what they were deciding was being reported. I mean, bearing in mind this is an association that uh, prides itself on being open and says that the public are invited in, and. Um, and they've got nothing to hide and everything, but the minute the public starts to report what they're saying, then they get incredibly guarded. And uh, uh, what happened was they were all staying in the same hotel, so they started agreeing everything in the morning at breakfast, and then they would come in and then they would just um, skim through the agenda and say, uh, you know, all those in favor, blah, 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 just take the votes formally, and uh, they just stopped discussing anything. So. <laughs> so what they did was they effectively made made the meeting private by uh, getting up an hour earlier and having and just discussing quick, everything quickly over breakfast. So if I interfered with them uh, in some way, then I'm I'm pleased if it hurried them up and made them. Uh, Focus their minds, you know, got them concentrating. Point or, but not at all open. Commissioning bodies not at all open. High Court, Eddie Crouch's uh, case, the orthodontic case, uh, very open. The uh, where there we are in the High Court. Eddie Crouch is there, the plaintiff. <coughs> The High Court judge is there with a streaming cold. I mean, really, he shouldn't have been at work that day. I wouldn't drive with a cold that bad. I don't know how you can drive a High Court with a cold that bad. So he was snuffling away and then... Um, and I was tweeting everything. I was sitting in the press box on my phone, tweet, 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 on oh, this has happened, tweet, this has happened, tweet. Tweets are probably all still there. And... Uh, the, the clerk of the court came up and he said 
uh, you've got to put their mobile phone away. And I said, no, I said, I'm allowed to report from from the court, the high court, you are allowed to report. Lord, <laughs> so believe it or not, the uh, ruling is by a guy called Lord Judge. And Lord Judge ruled that you can, um, you can report from the High Court by phone. Well, by any means whatsoever, you know. So he went off with his tail between his legs. So, High Court, open. Everything else, at the lower levels, the more corrupt levels, you know, the who knows who and who says what levels, corrupt. Okay, talk to you soon, bye.